Well, thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our webinar on creating field layout ready hangar routines with ECCAT. My name is Chris Taylor. I'm our Marketing Communications Manager here in the Trimble MEP division, and I'll be joined by Randy Swain, who will be walking us through our demo today. Um, you guys do have the option of joining either via the teleconference or via audio. I'm guessing you may have already known that since you're already on this call. Um, so to get us started today, I'll just walk us through a quick agenda. Um, I'll do a really brief intro. I'm going to um, spare everyone the, the full Trimble overview this morning since a lot of you guys were on our previous webinars. Um, I will pass it over to Randy, and we will take questions throughout the webinar, but I will save them to the end for Randy. If you guys do have questions, um, everyone does enter the conference muted. So if you have those, please ask those over the Q&A or the chat functionality, and I will get those over to Randy when we wrap up toward the end of the webinar today. Um, we will be recording this webinar, so if there's something you want to go back and review or share with a colleague or anything like that, we will be recording it and likely emailing it back out tomorrow or Monday. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and pass us over to Randy, and he can get us a little intro on what we're talking about today and get us started in our session. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen down here and make sure everyone can see it. And I'm going to just go right over here and open up the uh, the CAD package, and I hope everyone is able to view my screen. Again, I want to thank everyone for uh, taking time out of their day to come look at the uh, inserting the triple points into our hangar routines and being able to pull those out and uh, streamline the process for getting your hangers and your routings out to the field. The first place I would like to start with this is what we call part manager. Because we're going to set up a lot of different hangers, and our hangers are totally customizable. So if I come over here and I open up Part Manager and I just move into our hanger routines here, our hanger, hanger section, you'll notice down here I'm in my hanger section, and over here I have the adjustable type of hangers. I have clevis hangers. I have all different styles in here. By going in and opening up one of these, for instance, I'm going to start with one of the more difficult ones here, which is our seismic. So if I come in here and say, I just want to go in here and I want to look at and edit this uh, hanger. So if I come in here and you'll notice I have one of them in bold. What I've done is I've taken this one to where I can now come in and edit this uh, seismic hanger. So we have all kinds of seismic braces, braces at different angles. We can turn them on, turn them off, change the angle, change the diameter of the rod, and be able to pick up all this information. I'm going to go ahead and close this one on out and go back up to a simpler one, and let's just go up here to a clevis hanger. So if I go in here and open up a clevis hanger, and we'll just look at one of these. Here we have all the information about that hanger, but if we decide, to, again, to go to our edit, here's all the information that we have the ability to edit. You can add your own hanger manufacturers, your own rod diameters, uh, any of the information that you want by cloning one of these over and changing the data. As we move back into the model now, as I go ahead and say I'm done with that and open up the uh, East Coast AutoCAD MEP function here, we're going to talk first of all, let's say, about adding some hangers to the ductwork. So here we've got some duct runs in here, and we can just come on here and we can just touch onto a piece of duct. And once we want to touch onto that piece of duct, we now will have an option on our ribbon to go over here and add hangers. And I'm just going to go ahead and walk through adding the hangers first. So when I go in there and I click onto that, it brings up my dialog box for adding in my hangers. I can add the hangers several different ways. I can say I want to add them along the run or a single hanger or just a certain section. The insertion style can be unlimited. Here is the under slab elevation or where I want the top of my hanger rod to go to. Here is where we select our hanger preferences here. And I'm going to just do this with EC hangers, and we're going to offset from the start six inches. You can also put additional offset on these hangers if you're using trapeze hangers, if you needed a pipe to run down the same hanger as the duct. We can also specify the upper attachment that we want here. On my hanger strap, I'm going to say I'm just going to use a steel deck insert possibly, or I want to come in here and just use a, uh, a blue banger. Whatever you chose to put in here, you can. When I look at my hanger trapeze, I'm going to say, well, maybe I want to put an adjustable bead clamp at the top of that. And then when I come down to my round hangers, I'm just going to use a blue banger again as well. So by just going ahead and hitting OK, I'm going to let it go ahead and calculate these hangers out for me here. And it's placed those hangers on my uh, runs of duct here. And you'll notice here that I've put in a trapeze hanger. And over here, I've put in scrap hanger. 
I'm just going to take these and put these into a object viewer to look at these for a second. As we put them into the object viewer, we'll put those into an isometric view. You can see now that we have specified on a certain size duct here that we wanted to use a trapeze hanger with all thread rod with an adjustable beam clamp at the top. At the top of this rod, we have what we call a circle of influence that will allow you to give it a diameter and a height on this. So this can be a collision checkable item. So if you get into a position where you can't get your wrench onto your adjustable beam clamp, that can be a collision. Over here, we've shown we're using strap hangers. So that's your strap coming out both sides of the hangers. These hangers are attached to the duct, and so if we need to come in and move these hangers, we can just select the hanger, and then we have a move grip. We can just move that along the run of the duct right, wherever it's necessary. So once those are in place, now we can come back and select that. And uh, let me just go ahead and, excuse me, let me turn my phone off. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> But, uh, so now we've got the hangers placed in there on the duct. I want to show a couple of other uh, instances on the duct. And excuse me for one second. Can I call you right back? Yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you. Okay, pardon me on that. So now I come back here, and I'm going to go ahead and click onto this piece of duct. And as we go and we reference the... Uh, hangers on this. Again, we we'll just come right back in here and say we want to add the hangers. And now in this hanger routine, we also have some round duck on the end of this. And I'm going to go ahead and say I want to go ahead and specify that and go ahead and put these hangers in. So we go ahead and we add those hangers in, and you can see the status line. But now when I move down here to my round hangers, and I'm just going to pull this up into an object viewer and look at these as well. So if we go to the object viewer here and specify this in the isometric view, you can see here that we came off with the single strap on the round hangers. So this is all a matter of setting up your preferences. So to come back and set the preferences up, we come right back here under our fabrication pull down, and we'll just go right here to duct hanger preferences. So we can set these up by just coming up here. We can add or delete preferences. If I wanted to come in here and add a new preference, it's just a matter of touching the button and then coming in here and typing in whatever I want to call that preference. I'll just leave this one at preference one for now. And now we can come over here and we can set up for the rectangular, the round, and the oval our choice of hangers. So in this case on the rectangular, I may come in here and say, well, I want to go in here and I want to use a trapeze hanger with unistrut. I want to use my alt red rod. And if I want to put a circle of influence at the top of that, I can pick from several different sizes. Here we create the offsets for the hangers. How far of an offset to the left and an offset to the right, if this is a trapeze type hanger, I may want to have two inches off on each side. In the distance between hangers, I'll set the spacing here, let's say in this particular case, of eight feet. And then the distance from the end, I'll say maybe we want that to be one foot. So you set these up, and then you can also come back in here and say, this is being set up on the width for the rectangular duct, but now I want to add a new size range. So now I could say the upper limit of this one, we're going to make this one be at 36 inches. And then when we come down to this one, we set this one up totally different, but I'm going to do it as a trapeze as well with my rod and with my circle of influence. And so now I've set that up, and I'm again going to put some offset on that and some offset on this. And distance between the hangers now on this larger duct, maybe I'm going to change that down to, let's say, six foot. And then we want a distance from the end of one foot. So that's how we set these, these hanger preferences up. I can also do it for the round and do it for the oval as we move through here. But we can also specify any extended data that we want to go with that hanger. So if we want upper attachments here, and this is done from a list, so you can add to these lists and have these uh, report out. They do not model, but they do report out. So that's how we set up a hanger preference here on the, for the duct side. If I come back now to the duct and want to take these into the total station, by just coming up here to my pull down right here, I'll come over here and say I want to go to my total station pull down. And now I'm just going to select my objects that I want to bring in. So I've just gone ahead and made a selection over the duct work. And now by just going ahead and selecting that, now I have a file that I can enter in here 
my duck hangers, my duck center points, my duck corner points, and my duck bottom corner points. I can also give this numbering information so I know which numbers are my duct versus my uh, mechanical piping versus my plumbing. Okay? So we'll go ahead and just give this a, a sample name and we'll just save that as Randy. And that can be uploaded into the uh, total station. So I'll just save that file. So now we can come back and we can start talking about some other types of hangers. First of all, I want to just run another piece of duct down here. So I'm just going to come back over here, and I'm going to just click onto this piece of duct right here. And I'm going to tell it that I want to do a uh, duct add. So I'm going to say I'm going to add selected here. And I'm just going to put this piece of duct here and run this out. And I'm just going to do a short section on this. And we put this at a particular elevation. So when I come back over to this and I hover over this duct, we'll know the elevation of this is going to be at nine foot. So again, I'm going to say I want to place some hangers on this, but this time I'm going to place a different type of hanger. I want to place some seismic hangers. So if I come back through here now and say I want to add the seismic to this, I'll leave the elevation the same, and I can tell the upper attachment whatever I want to add to it, but I'm just going to hit OK and let it calculate these on out for me. So what this is going to do, this is put in some seismic braces. So I'm just going to take a couple of these and put these into the object viewer as well. And when I look at these in the object viewer, we'll see now that we've got seismic bracing coming off of these hangers and can locate those points for it as well. If we move over into the piping side now, we have several different types of piping hangers. And I'm just going to run a little pipe run out here. First of all, I'm going to say I want it to be a, a welded system. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the weld, and I'll go ahead and select the diameter of the pipe that I want to use. It's going to be, let's say, 8 inch. And we're going to put that at 10 foot elevation. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want to specify the cut length, and I want to make these pipe 252 or 21 foot randoms. So now, as I move down through here and draw the pipe, and I'm just drawing some simple layout here on the piping, and I want to come through here and I want to uh, put the hangers in on this. Again, by just selecting the pipe and going up here to add hangers, now I can go ahead and pick my hanger routine that I want to use here. So in this case, I'm going to say I want to use my steel pipe clevis hangers, so I'm going to change that to my steel pipe clevis. I want to put an adjustable beam clamp at the top of this, and now we're going to go ahead and you'll notice it fix the size of the hanger here for me at 8 inch. So it's automatically looking at the pipe and knowing the size of the, the hanger. If I insulate that pipe, it's going to oversize the hanger for the insulation, and I'll show that here in just a moment. But if we just go ahead and hit OK now and let it go ahead and calculate those hangers in for me, it's going to put those in at the spacing we had set up for our preference. If we take this back and put this into our object viewer to look at this, now we have our clevis hangers with our rod here. If there's a, something in the way where you can't get that rod all the way up to that top elevation, you can just click on that and change that right here in your properties palette. I'll set change that to 12 foot for the top of that hanger rod. Now when I take these back and look at these into the object viewer in the front view here, we're going to see that I shorten of that one hanger. If we want to come down here and if we want to run out a rack of pipe and put, use some trapeze hangers, we can do that by simply coming up here and saying we want to go to run parallel pipe. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch on to each one of these that I want to run with. I'm going to start with the center one, pick that one, and then I'll pick this one. And now I'm going to go ahead and start running these out. But do I want the cut length on these? I'm going to say no, I do not, because these are going to be different lengths of pipe, so I can run them out without the cut lengths. But they are different systems, different specs, and they can also be different diameters. But I'm going to go ahead and just end those at that point, and then I can come back here and say, well, on this run of pipe, if I want to go to my pipe length now, and I want to take this to 20, 21 foot lengths, and I want that to be with my thread by weld, I'll just say apply that to the run and hit OK, and it's going to break that pipe up for me. Now, the next one I've done here is a Victaulic system, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on it. But you'll notice here that it's changed to the groove system for me here, so it's going to know to insert the Victaulic couplings. But now on here, I've got a copper press fit system. So when I go to do this one on the pipe length, I'm going to change it to just the 20-foot lengths, and it knows to put in the copper couplings as well. So those are all put in for me. And now this is ready to go ahead and put some trapeze hangers on. 
So if I click on this tab now and say I want to add hangers, and I'll go to my hanger routine, and I'll go ahead and pick that I want to use some trapeze hangers. So I'll pick the trapeze hangers. I'll pick what I want for my upper attachment. And here again, it knows that it's picking these up. And I'm going to say I want an additional offset to the rod on this of 16 inches to pick up the other two pipes. So if we go ahead and we just select that and then just go ahead and hit OK, and we'll let it go through here and calculate down our trapeze hangers on this as well. And now that's brought in our trapeze hangers. So again, we'll look at these once more in the object viewer to see the isometric plane of this. And there you can see my, my all thread, my circle of influence, and my unit strut on this. Again, if one of these hangers needs to be moved, maybe I need to move this one a little bit, I can just grab a hold of the hanger, grab a hold of the intelligent grip, and just slide that down into the new location. The hangers are connected to the pipe. To take this a, a, a little step further, we have different hanger styles. So I'm going to come back here and say, I want to go with pipe now uh, four inch, but at this time I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some insulation to it. So my insulation thickness I'm going to put in here is going to be two inch, and I'm going to come down here and just run this pipe right here. So now we ran that pipe in there, and you can see it added the insulation to it. When I come back now and I click onto this pipe to add my hangers, and I go to my hanger routine, and I can use any of the hanger routines I want right here, I'm going to say let's go back to, let's go to our steel pipe roller hangers. And it picked up an 8-inch hanger for me here because it oversized that hanger because of the insulation. So I'll go ahead and just say go ahead and put these hangers on. And now as we come back and look at this, and we'll just look at this hanger in the object viewer and give you a little snapshot of that, of the roller hanger that we have here, and we'll have the clevis hanger. Also, we want to come back now, and we want to take these into the Trimble Total Station, but I want to step one more step before I do that. I'd like to come and run some slope piping. So we can come back here, and let's say we want to change this now to a no-hub system, and I'm going to come back here and say, yes, I want to specify the cut length now, and the cut length is going to be every 10 feet for my no-hub pipe. And then I want to go in here, and I want to specify a slope as well. So if I move back down here to get my slope, I'll just come right here and say I want that to be minus one-eighth of an inch. So now as I go to start drawing in this no-hub pipe, and I'll just move it around here to there, just a little bit offset here. Now that's all on, on grade, and it's put my flexible coupling in every uh, 10 feet. Well, here in this particular scenario, I added insulation to that, and I'm going to just come back over here and select that and say I want that insulation to go away. I want that to be zero. So after the fact, I've taken the insulation off. So now I'm going to come back and say let's go ahead and let's add the hangers for this, and we're going to hang this from a uh, elevation here of 13 foot 6, and we're going to change this to a cast iron pipe clevis hanger, and we can again put in your upper attachment. But notice it's got the 4 inch hanger, and it knows it's the cast iron, so that knows it's a plumbing spec. So that means it knows that it's going to have to put a hanger so far either side of each one of these flexible couplings. So when you, it comes back and it puts the hangers in, you'll notice there that it put them in so far either side of the flexible coupling. So if I go ahead and look at this in the object viewer, and we'll look at this from the front view, and we'll be able to see the grade of the pipe here as well. So now we want to take that just a little bit further, and we want to take and put these into our total station. So we just come back here, and again, we just say we want to go to total station. We'll select all of our piping objects that we want to put into this. And again, we're just able to create a file right here with all of the pipe hanger points and the pipe points. So you can lay your pipe out as well as not just the hangers. And just give that the name that you want to save that file to. And again, I'll just come back with Randy uh, Pipe Hangers. And that can be uploaded to the Trimble Total Station. One additional item that you might like out of here is the fact that we can come in and we can give you all your links of rod. So even though we put this on a graded system, I can come back here and go to my schedules here and say, I want to go over here and I want to get my uh, rod and ha hanger schedule, and I'm just going to go ahead and select that slope pipe there, and now I've got a schedule here that's giving me the length of every one of the cut lengths of all that rod on that graded system. If we came back down to where we had changed some of that and just said, well, let's go get all of the um, 
hangers. I can come back through there and select the duct. I can select the uh, hangers we put into the model here. And then all the other rod and everything we have back here. And now we're going to have a brand new schedule with a lot of different links in there because they were all from the same links, but we had a lot of them in there. And that kind of concludes the uh, way we put the hangers into the East Coast with our hanger routines and how we export those hanger points out to the Trimble Total Station. And at that time, Chris, I would be happy to open up for questions. Well, thank you so much, Randy. Uh, if you guys do have questions, I don't have any pending right now, but if you do have some, please please send them over via the chat or the Q&A function. I'll be happy to pass those along to Randy, and we can get any of the questions you might have on what you saw today answered for you. We'll give everyone just a moment to get those in, should they choose. So uh, Danny has a question here, Randy. He would like to know what the best practice for adding hangers to pieces of equipment to export to a Trimble RTS is. Oh, to, to equipment? Well, that's something that um, at the present time East Coast is working on to get additional manually placed points to the Trimble uh, total station. Today, the best way to do it is to take a, a small piece of pipe or a small piece of duct and adhere that to the corner of your equipment as a on a separate layer, maybe called as a uh, called as an insert or as a sleeve, and then it'll pick up the point from there. But it is picking it up from the pipe and the duct and the pipe hangers today. But we are working on some additional functionality for manually placing points throughout your model. Great, thanks. And then, and then Mike was wondering, once you export the points, do you just open them up in the field points program to see them? You would actually, you would send over a DXF file and the point file. And those, the point file lays on top of the DXF file so you can see your points that way. Great. And then Drew was wondering, will the hangers populate past a T? Uh, yes. Yes, if I, if I come back here and put in a pipe run, let me put one in here, and now let's just say we want to go through here and we want to pull a T off of this one. Make sure we can change that to a T. It's trying to pull off a, a takeoff instead, so I want to just come down here until I want to pull off with a T. One second here, bear with me. Oh, let me just run out. Piece of steel pipe, you know, we'll do that with it as well. So there would be thread by well, no slope. And we'll go ahead and run this on out. So let me say I want no insulation. And we want to come back here, we want no slope on this as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this, and we want this to be, you know, just run out a short distance here. And now we come back here, and I want to grab this, and I want to grab the grip. And once I grab the grip, now I can come over here and I can set the uh, way I want to bring this down. You see right here it's saying a takeoff. I want to set it to a T only. So I just say I want to come out here with a T, and we'll set that T in place. And now we're going to go ahead and we'll just come back here and click onto this and say add hangers. And we'll go ahead and use this as the steel pipe hangers. That elevation is fine. Okay. We'll calculate that on out. You see it, it went right past the T. Now, I do have to start back on a branch with the hanger routine again, but it does go through the fittings, but you do need to start back on the branches. Great, thanks, Randy. Dave was wondering uh, maybe what the current version is or if there's a new version of the uh, East Coast CAD database for hangers. Uh, the current version that I'm running right here, if you just, uh, Dave, if you just go in here and type in EC Diag right here, you can see that I'm running the 6.3.14.16 version. There is a new version about to come out uh, 
don't have an exact date, but it's right around the corner. And it does have some changes on some of the piping functionality. I don't think it has changes on the hangers at this point. Great, thanks. Then we have a couple of compatibility questions here um, concerning, you know, does the C product only run on uh, AutoCAD MEP or, or can it run on some other solutions such as TSI? It runs on, only on AutoCAD MEP, and we're right now currently we support 2014, 2015, and 2016. The new release I was just mentioning that's right around the corner will support 2017. So we are in those four, but it is definitely only an AutoCAD MEP. Great, thanks, Randy. And then uh, one more question here from Chad. Is there a way to schedule the strap hanger lengths? There is. Uh, it's not as easy as a schedule that uh, we've done with the rod, but yes, it can be calculated from your upper attachment to the bottom of your duct, and it's done with a formula. Uh, so you can add additional uh, amounts to that hanger strap for how much you're turning it under the duct or how much you're clipping it over the, the bar joist, or depending on how you're clamping it. But, yes, it, it can be done. Great. Well, th that's all the questions we have at, a, at the moment. Um, like I said, we will be sending this recording out so you guys will get a chance to review it if there's anything you missed or wanted to go back and rewatch. Um, if you do have additional questions, feel free to send those in to meplearning at trimble.com, and we'll be sure to pass those around along to Randy or the ECCAD team. Mm -hmm. Randy's email is also right there on the screen for you, rswaim at trimble.com. So if you guys do have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, if you have questions on product compatibility, pricing, et cetera, Randy is your guy, and he will be able to help you there at that contact information. Um, let, me make a, let me make a quick correction on that. that. That is my wrong email address. My real email address is randy underscore swain at tremble.com. Okay, so it's randy underscore swain at tremble.com. Great, no problem. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for jumping on. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Randy, for your time, and we look forward to having you guys on a future webinar. Thanks, everyone.